Yarn Hellions. We're so glad you're joining us today. Um, we're shooting from Ohio City in Cleveland at the Hildebrandt Building. Mm -hmm. um, and this is our second episode, and we're so excited that um, people so watched excited. the last one. We got such nice feedback. We so. love all of you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us again, and we have more to share. We have so much to share. We have a table <laughs> full so of goodies. <laughs> Trying to hold it on a four-foot table was difficult. Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, oh, this is Sarah. Hi. Sarah Flynn of Superfine Yarn Co. Yep. You introduce me. Yeah. And this is Christine <laughs> Parker. Hi. Christine Parker Co. So I'm a dyer and Christine is a designer. So this works well designer. because we can um, both talk about our businesses and what we're knitting and what we're reading. And what we're reading, yes. And we will share all of our fun stuff with you guys. And it's the best. Thank you for hanging out with us. <laughs> Uh, oh, we had a an agenda, we and did. I don't remember anything that's yeah, on Yeah, yeah. So um, we were actually going to talk first about how we learned to knit. That's right. Our our knitting origin stories. That sounds better. It sounds like we're superheroes. Oops, sorry. That was a speaker. Oh, my fault. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. So... I was thinking about this on the drive over here and trying to figure out what I was going to say because I don't really know how I got started mm -hmm. knitting. It just It's one of those things that just sort of happened. I didn't have like a cool aunt who like uh, taught me or whatever. That's my story. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I started crocheting first in like 2010 uh, because I really wanted to learn how to make granny squares because I think they're so retro and just... So cool. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to make, I took a class at the um, like community center, the library or something um, with my mommy and I learned how to crochet first. And then I kept trying to make stuff with crochet and I found that there weren't as many awesome crochet patterns as there were for knitting patterns. Like I would go on Ravelry and try to find stuff and it would be all knitting always, all the time. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember wanting to make a hat, like a cozy winter hat. And I, I was like, the crochet fabric doesn't like look right. I wanted the little bees, mm -hmm. you know, from knitting. Right. So I was like, I'm gonna go to YouTube University and learn myself how to uh, knit. So then I just taught myself from YouTube videos. Um, and already like learning crochet first, I already knew how to hold the yarn in my left hand. So I just taught myself continental knitting um, holding the yarn in my left hand and it just, it just, I never stopped. I don't, well, I was going to say, I don't think a day has gone by that I haven't knit, but many days have gone by that I haven't knit. Like yesterday went by and I didn't touch my knitting, but, um, and then as for designing, that was sort of a whirlwind. Um, I worked for a really long time as, uh, in administration and reception at a mental health, uh, doctor's office. And I really hated it. It was, I mean, I mean, you guys know, like when you have a job that sucks and it's just drains the life out of you. And I had just finished my English degree at Cleveland State. So I was like, I'm going to quit my job and become a book editor. That was like my dream job. So I did that. And for like 18 months, I worked as I like started a business. I was book editing. I got a certificate in, um, copy editing through the University of Chicago. And I was living the dream. And it turns out the dream was terrible and I hated it. <laughs> it was that's... like, that was another thing that was like, just completely draining to me. Well, and me. it's like people say librarians like sit around and read all day. Oh, I love yeah. I should be a librarian because you just sit around and say, right. yeah, yeah. That's, that's not, not the job. That's not what it is. <laughs> copy editing is really, really hard. It's incredibly detailed and like I do like that stuff but I only like doing it to my own work I don't like to edit other people's stuff yeah. no offense my authors like who I worked with I loved I loved the, the authors I just hated doing the work yeah so then I decided to quit that like a year ago mm -hmm. and then I just like did nothing uh for a couple months trying to figure out what I wanted to do and and then quarantine hit uh, and then I continued to do nothing because, because quarantine, <laughs> I started a bunch of Afghans, uh, and then 
I w- was thinking like I keep making these patterns for myself you know, like I'll, I'll like go and search Pinterest or Ravelry or whatever, and I can't find the exact thing that I want to make. So then I would just make it up myself. I was like, why don't I just write down the directions and give them to other people? So it just sort of, that just sort of happened. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm on, I just sent my fifth pattern to my editor. Bless her heart, doing the editing that I don't want to do. See? So I could pass it on to someone else. Yes. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and here we are. And then I started making mugs with swear words on them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's my story. My superhero origin story. Oh, nice. So I did have the cool aunt. Yeah. Um, so kind of around the end of college. So um, we, she taught me how. And I kind of went through phases with it, like picking it up and mm-hmm. um, putting it down. And, of course, I would get dazzled by the newest thing on Ravelry. So, mm-hmm. like, I would be, you know, three months in. And I want to do, you know socks I want to do like just I was always and she would just be so good with me and you know okay so we'd start socks and do socks for six months Mm -hmm. and I'd you know I'd dump that and the next thing was you know so I was always like way more ambitious than I should have been for a beginning knitter but she was always so good and it was so nice um when you drop stitches (coughs) or messed up she was always there to like fix it for me so when I went home I was like oh thank you so much um, so, and then we did a lot of like, we would go to Great Lakes in Worcester. And oh, that's do a lots good of, show. Like, yep. It's a great show. And, um, do like yarn shops when we went to Columbus and things like that. So, um, so that's been really, I was really lucky, um, so that she nice. taught me. And so we still kind of, um, go back and forth today about what we're working on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how did you get started dyeing? kind of grew out of that um going to shows Mm -hmm. and knitting my own things and kind of um seeing I definitely say like hedgehog fibers was a big inspiration Mm -hmm. and just color um my mom was an art teacher and just was always around creative things and actually did some indigo dyeing in um high school with her and quilting and all sorts of like creative things so it just kind of grew out of that (coughs) And Sorry. Uh, <laughs> my desire to kind of have the colors that I wanted to knit with. And um, like, I couldn't find my patterns. You couldn't yeah. find your colors. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I get to dye the colors I want, as you'll see later with my love. I like, love I that. just get to, do, to, you know, kind of, um, yeah, make a palette that it, I enjoy. And so. When did you move into the Hildebrandt building? The Hildebrandt was two years ago in August, which is crazy. Wow, okay. I know, I know. So um, I was working at my house, um, but I had those burners, the plug-in electric burners, mm. and they just blow. They lose so much electricity. <laughs> oh, so no. I got the back porch set up and got more burners, and it just, just like immediately yeah. shut down everything. So um, it was time to get a, a real space. A and, yeah, yeah. So nice. Yeah. Okay. So you're a yarn superhero, and yes, I'm yeah. a, a yarn superhero, too. And all of you are yarn <laughs> superheroes. <laughs> I'd be interested. Like, I love um, hearing people's stories, like how they get started with knitting or quilting yeah. or and writing romance novels or whatever. Like, I learned to so die on YouTube. So, oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. So... Um, you can learn a lot of shit on YouTube. You really can, because people <laughs> will ask me online, you know, how I learned mm-hmm. it. Uh, Q Loco and Fiber for the People both have kind of tutorial things about how to get started, and that's how I learned. Nice. I have, like, Trial a tickle the- in my throat, and I can't get rid of it. I know. Yeah. Pause for a second. <coughs> I don't have coronavirus because I don't <laughs> ever leave my house. <laughs> I was just talking to um, Mariah. Do you know, have you met her in real I have, yeah. Okay. I was just talking to her yesterday about how the only other human being I have spent any time with without a mask on, who's not my husband, is you. That's, you're my bubble. You and Devin are my bubble. That's, <laughs> that's it. it. Not even my parents. <coughs> and I don't ever leave, so. And Mariah owns Beauty Mark yarn, so. Mariah does own Beauty, local yes. Local dyer, if you yes. she, like to follow her. I believe just, um like up, updated her stock at we'll cut this part out uh what's that yarn shop that i go to every week on thursday around the table thank you yeah yeah she i believe oh um, nice i saw, saw she did a shop update but yeah i, I think she's got more there too don't quote me i might have 
invented that in my head. Um, but I feel like I heard her talking to Beth and Pam about Good. updating stock. Ooh, so great. yeah, very exciting. Um, she's a sweet baby angel. She and is. so are Beth and Pam. We love you, Beth and Pam. <laughs> yes. Um, what's next? Um, giveaway. Okay. Yeah. So last time in our last episode, we were giving away, uh, the skein of minis. Mm-hmm. And the stickers. Have them right here. Sparkle minis. The sparkle minis. And stickers. And the swearing stickers. Yay. Uh, and we ask that you uh, leave a comment on our video on YouTube, and then we would pick. We would pick a name. Do you want to? I cut sure. all the comments out. Ooh. Oh, I was gonna say, don't say the last name. Okay. Like just because for privacy or whatever. I feel like. Okay. Oh. All right. Who you got? Uh, Megan. Megan R. Yeah. She said, what a fun watch. Love that it's books and yarn. Aw, we love you. Uh, So, so Megan, we will get in touch. I don't know how. Through YouTube somehow. We will find you. Uh, And then we will send you minis and swearing stickers. Yay. (laughs) What's our next giveaway? Yeah. So, I have a skein of my bulky. I love that so much. The last um, one in my colorway island. So... Very, it's got so green and beautiful. And oh. A little bit of beige in there. So, that's and then pretty. we have a Phyllis sticker. We have a sticker oh my gosh. with Phyllis Vance Vance Refrigeration, <laughs> who is my dog. <laughs> uh, if you don't follow me on YouTube, you should because Phyllis is the star. It's not about me, it's all about Phyllis. She goes sleepy night night. Uh, it's her favorite thing in the whole world. So, we it's, have a, a sticker and it's Scott's Phyllis's face. It's my. Sometimes she wants to go sleepy night night at like 2 p.m. 2 p.m., 9 o'clock in the morning. She doesn't care. She just wants to go sleep at night night all the time. She's my dog. Oh, I was thinking, too, we should bring our dogs. I know. One at a time, though, because... And have them. Yeah. That's it, yeah. That would be Phyllis's dream, just to sit right here and be part of the couch pile. (laughs) So um, we're going to post this episode. It's going to go live on November 6th. So then you'll have until whatever the following Friday is to like leave a comment on our YouTube and then we'll announce the winner in the next episode, which will be at the beginning of December. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Leave a comment. Oh, I know. Leave a comment telling us about your knitting or crochet or quilting or whatever origin story. Yeah. Tell us how you got started uh, doing your craft of choice. Um, Yeah. Yeah, because I like I said, I'm really I'm always interested in learning how people get started. So tell us. Yeah, I would yes. love to know. Uh, okay, giveaway. Let's not lose Megan's name. Okay, I'll be like, yeah. who won oh. the giveaway? Tell me about Storehouse Tea. Oh, great! So Storehouse Tea is um, a tea blender that is located in the Hildebrand, owned by Paula, and I just wanted to show off how awesome their tea is and I'm drinking the ginger lime right now and then I got some bright mint so it's storehousetea.com actually she used to be in this when she came and started she was in this space so that's when she'll come up and oh I remember this used to be here this used to be here so yeah so she's on the first floor now so we're having an open house here um the weekend after Thanksgiving so um all of us will be open so if you'd like to come visit you can see how she blends her tea and all of her great products. So. She is. A, is there a shop in Van Aken District? Somebody, <sighs> my friend Brittany. Hi, Brittany. I don't know if you watch this, but hi. Uh, Brittany mentioned this um, storehouse teas turmeric blend was oh, like wow. her mom used it for like inflammation, like for arthritis or something. And I was like, oh, my hands have been hurting. I'm gonna get some turmeric tea. And she told me that they have a. Oh wow. I think she said that they have a, a shop, like a brick and mortar shop in the Van Aken district in Shaker Heights. Oh, well, I will find out. It's possible I made that up though. I don't. I know she sells in a lot of shops, but I don't, I didn't know that she has. Oh, like, oh maybe that's what it is, is that like, yeah. she's carried in yeah. one of those shops. Yeah, that's very possible. Well, her website's really cool and her Instagram is lovely. Yeah, so. yeah. So if you need some tea for the winter, support her. Oh, tea is so good. <laughs> I have Costco uh, green tea, Kirkland brand. (laughs) It's actually really good. It's like my favorite green tea. (laughs) Whatever. It's fine. 
Um, oh, and then somebody asked in our in the comments. I only noticed it when I was printing out for the giveaway. Someone asked about your shirt from nice. the last episode. I realized we didn't talk about mm -hmm. it. So it's Stitcher's Tees. Um, I wanted to get their website right. The Stitcher. Stitcher. <laughs> Stitchers with an S. Stitchers Tees. T-E-E-S dot com. Um, and they're in the UK and they have all sorts. They have ones that say knitter. They actually have one now that says dyer. So I have to get another nice. one. Sweatshirts. All sorts of um, awesome gear to wear. So Yours. And it said, what did it say? Um, that said Yarnivore. Yarnivore, yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, somebody asked about it. So okay. I don't own any, I realized. I was like getting dressed this morning. I was like, I don't have any cool knitting oh, see? shirts. So I got to buy some. I've been thinking about putting my very offensive uh, oh. rainbow. But I'm like, I don't know. Do people want to wear uh, t-shirts yeah. that say, fuck off, I'm knitting with a rainbow ball of yarn? Oh. I Let us know. Yeah. yeah. Tell me and I'll make you shirts. <laughs> What's next? Um, Are we going too fast? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell on our end. I know. It's, it's, I, I feel like for our first episode, it like flew by. Blah, 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 blah. It flew by. At the end, it seemed like it was yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. But we only, we got like a whole, we probably filmed for a whole hour last time. Mm -hmm. And it once I edited everything, it like got cut down to it was about forty five minutes, which was that was great. I was yeah. very proud of us. <laughs> uh, I have some mm. yarn to show off. Okay. Oh yes, please show me Ooh, yarn. Yay. So, a few things. Oh, first, actually, I want to show off that I was in Cleveland <gasps> Magazine what? along with two other Cleveland dyers, Cornbread and Honey, and Fuzzy oh. Green Fibers. I don't know fuzzy green fibers. Yeah, Larissa. Oh my god. So yeah. Um, so but I don't even see if I can find it. Oh yeah, tight knit. So that is um, has so some little awesome. knitting tips and then it has a little profile of each of us. Oh my god. So I for the moon. So where, I finally got my hands on. <laughs> where would a person buy uh, I got this at CVS. Oh. Um, I forget that you can like go to places and buy things. <laughs> 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 you don't have to order it online, Christine. Uh, <laughs> so, cool. I just wanted to. That's exciting. That it was so exciting. So, um, it's like my first time in print. So, Aww. show that off. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so, congratulations to Tanya and Larissa, too. If you don't know them, yes, go yes. look up Cornbread and Honey. And it's fuzzy green fibers with three Z's. Fuzzy green fibers. <laughs> awesome. And, <laughs> um, so I have some sparkle sock one of a kinds to show off. So uh, this is swoon, pinky, Ooh. little bit of purple, a little bit of green in there. Mm -hmm. And then this is lust, which has some Ooh. really nice like coppery magenta. And it's funny, there's a little bit of like baby blue in there. Yeah, which it just they're is very romantic combo, colors. But works well. Love yeah, it. So too. and they're one of a kind. They're one of a kind. So oh. I think I've got. Um, a few of each left, but mm -hmm. you show them off. This. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I think love this one with the blue. I know. I know. Nice. So, as you can see. Do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Just like hold it up there and see if the camera. I didn't. Yeah, because sometimes I know when people do that, it doesn't um, focus very well. Oh, it's so pretty. It is. Good job. Oh, Good thanks. job, you. Woo. <laughs> um and. Single space. I wanted to show off. I got a few reds that are one of a kind, um, but this is Rendezvous. Ooh, that's and fun too. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to show that off. So this is kind of an orangey red, um, kind of like burnt colors almost. And then I have a few other one of a kinds too uh, that are red, but I really wanted to show this one off a little bit of orange. I'm like really into reds lately. Yeah, yeah. I love that. It's a nice, really pretty. Yeah. Very fall. I know. Like, I like, that one. like the leaves on fire or whatever. <laughs> and um, the DKMCN, I have two nice fall colors. So this is Olive Branch, um, kind of more green, but with some kind of browns and tans in there. And, and olive? Then, mm -hmm. Olive green? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> A little See? bit of olive in there, an olive branch. Definitely. Mm -hmm. 
And um, this one was a live dye demo that um, we did a little bit ago. And I think it's a lovely fall color. So Very pretty. You know, that looks like leaves. Yes, for sure. So. How do you do a live demo? Boy, that sounds um, stressful. Yeah, yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> the virtual, the last one I did, um, we had an overhead camera set up and then had my brother dying while I was like talking. So wow. it, it was a lot because you had to have the split screen set up with um, the software oh. running two Whoa. different. Yeah. So Whoa. it was a lot, but it was, it was fun. And I still have some of those. That's so. cool. Yeah. Come pick those up. And then oh, your brother's name? Barkley. Hi, Barkley. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and then I have the same day we did a bulky demo too. So this is the live dye bulky. Um, and I like, there's like some little berry pops in there, mostly blue. So cute. Yeah. Can I, can I just hold you it? You can. I really like this base. I haven't okay. had a chance to make anything. That what? Uh, yeah, you need to know with it. See I, need, I know, I need to, because it's so, you guys, it's so squishy. I talked about this last time. I just, like, wanted to squish it. I'm going to take a moment. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. No. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah, so those are my colors I wanted to show off. Um, All colors. Oh, I did want to show off uh, my hat, which is a local designer, Heather. So I actually have kits for this on my site. So this is a crochet hat, which I wanted to Is it really? Yeah, it is. It is. And it has like a little waffle pattern, yeah. you can see. Um, so Heather Durdle, and it's called Overlapping Life. And her website is Heather Spins Yarn. Let me make sure I got that right. You said she's local? Yeah, she is. I don't know her either. I met her at um, the same show that we were both at um, in the spring, and I'm blanking on I it. I can't remember what it was either. Yeah, see. So um, she came up and showed me the hat, and um, I really love this pattern. So um, those are on my site under kits. And it's um, this is the uh, worsted, Corydale worsted base. Okay. And then there's a um, pom-pom that you can have mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. so, super really, cute. Really super cute pattern. I wish I had found that hat when I was uh, Looking crocheting. for crochet. Yeah, it's super cute. I think that there's a lot more variety. Uh, now. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, because like Ravelry has blown up, um, and like I don't know, the internet I guess is bigger now than it was in 2014 when I started yeah. knitting. I mean, what even year is it? <laughs> um, and I have one more kit to share. So this is um, this bird knits. And this is the Daydreamer shawl. And this is made out of the MCN DK, and it's a three so skein pretty. kit. It is. It was a really good um, like Netflix knit because there's only two different sections, mm -hmm. um, and it's one of which size. is garter stitch. Yeah, yeah. Love so, it. Um, it is really. It's the perfect size, I think. And um, I've had this sample for a little while. Um, so right now in the shop, I have this in my tonal gray, which is best for. That's the DK. And this is the, yeah, the DK okay. MCN. So you can see that is the pattern. She's a Michigan designer. Which is practically local. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I have that there. So show this off. <laughs> so that's all my yarn sharing I had. Okay. I hear about design. So wait, let me put this away. Okay. Well, I'll talk about this cause it's in my hands. This is not my design. This is, uh, um, a design by Martina Bem and it is my most favoritist knit project pattern of all time. This is my 10th one. All time. This is your 10th. This is my 10th. This and is the hitchhiker shawl. Oh my Let's gosh. hold it up a little bit by Martina Bem. This it's on the needle. So let's, okay. Yeah. Um, I did bring one that is complete. This was like my eighth, ninth oh uh, my hitchhiker. Gosh. It's so, it's one skein of sock yarn or any yarn. You can, it, like gauge doesn't really matter, but I've been making them with sock yarn and it's just a long skinny, where, there we go. A long skinny triangle with a toothed edge and it's garter stitch and it's, it's such a cute size. It's, it's a great size and it, I keep making them because it's perfect for gifts. And it's so, it's so easy Long to wear. It, yeah. Looks good no matter yeah. how. Yeah. 
So I love this pattern. So this, I, because it's only one skein, I usually just keep one going all the time. And I just like keep it in my purse. It's my travel knitting project. You don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about it because it, it's garter stitch. It's really easy. Um, so that's like my comfort knitting, my easy comfort knitting. And I have to say, I have worked on this a lot lately because I have needed a lot of comfort, comfort. knitting. <laughs> yes. Because, because what, I mean... I don't need to tell you guys, you know, like the world it's is on fire. fire and yeah. And so like I was going through, I went just recently for a couple of weeks, I was in this like really shitty depressive episode. So I was just like laying on the couch and playing uh, Stardew Valley. Oh my gosh. Do you play Stardew Valley? I did, but I'm an Animal Crossing okay. more. Yeah. yeah. They don't have that on mobile and I don't have a, um, a Switch, so I can't play Animal Crossing, but... But it's like the same thing yeah, with the yeah, farming, farming and whatever. Yeah. So I was like doing that and knitting garter stitch and just trying to like get out of bed every day. But I'm much better now. So, but anyway, if you need a really comforting pattern, tell me the yarn. Oh, this is um, Stitch Together Studio. Um, it's a sock kit that I got. Uh, oh, I don't have it. So it so came, it, it was. I, it's a sock kit that I got in the yarn discovery tour last year. Um, and it came with like a skein of sock yarn and then a contrast color for like the toe and the heels. But I hate knitting socks. So I'm like, I'm going to make a, a hitchhiker with that. Um, and yeah, Stitch Together Studio. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put it in the show notes when I, when I look it up. Did you get it at Around the Table? I got it at, I think, Harps and Thistles. Oh, okay. Been down there. You haven't been to Harps no, and Thistles? That's one of my favorite um, local shops. That's, yeah. And it's in such a cute little area in Cuyahoga Falls. Um, there's like all kinds of like little restaurants and boutiques right, and antique shops, and the falls are there. It's real pretty. So, yeah, that's a cool little area. Um, yeah. So cute. Hitchhiker, Martina Bem. I feel like I, I've knit this so many times, I feel like I need to like buy another pattern because. Because I knit it so many times. Um, so that's that's comfort knitting. That's somebody else's pattern. But it's okay. We talk about other people's stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I need to talk about the... Let's see. Uh, what is this called? The paramelogram wrap. Because I finished it. I'm going to un- unbutton it. I showed it. It was on the needle still the last time we filmed. And I finished it. And it's the patterns with the editor right now. She'll probably be done... This week, um, and then we will begin testing hopefully next week. But by the time this airs, we'll probably already have been, like it'll already be in testing. So sorry, guys. Um, you'll just have to knit it when, when it comes out. Oh my so gosh. Okay, it's a big fit it on I know. the screen. <laughs> it's a big, huge rainbow. Um, and it's a so called because it's knit on the bias and it's all garter stitch. It's just a big, long rectangle knit on the bias um, so it makes like the diagonal stripes i used mini skeins from local dyers uh there's cornbread and honey in here which are the sparkle the sparkle minis like the darker um colors and then i alternated them with neon minis from loopy luna fibers uh heller he- uh, blah, 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 blah. heather um who is from columbus who is a sweet baby angel um and and then the gray is oh man the gray it's called jilly dyed something dreaming color dreaming color yarns jilly base um and did i explain everything you i added, added the i yeah. think you added the i cord i added the i cord i added the where's my camera i added the buttonholes so there's buttons and buttonholes, if you hate buttons, uh, that's fine. Those are optional. Um, I wanted them so that I could connect the two ends and then like wrap it like a cowl. Um, and it's really squishy. Oh my gosh. And it's rainbow. And I'm so excited about this pattern. It was really fun to make, um, except for the buttonholes, which were very stressful. And also the I cord, which took 900 years. <laughs> um, but I love the way it I looks. Love yeah, it takes forever, but it's so, it makes such a good like a good clean edge with the contrast color. So I don't know. I hope you guys will be excited to knit this. I've shown it off a couple times at around the table 
patio knitting. And my Cleveland yarn friends are like, oh my God, hurry up and finish that pattern yeah. so we can make it because cause it's awesome. It so awesome. yeah, c- collect your minis. It would be good for like um, a fade, a fade Definitely. kit or um, like just a bunch of scrap yarns. You like start on one end and just work your way down. Yeah. Knit it as long as you want. So that's, that's that the parallelogram great. wrap. Thank oh my you. Gosh, I'm so proud. Yeah. I'm excited about this one. Um, let me check my notes because there was something else I wanted to talk about. Oh, shit. I don't think I brought it. I finished, um, I think in the last episode, I was working, I had just cast on a scrap hat. Mm-hmm. The reverse, it's like a reverse stockinette scrap hat because I had knit it and I had, I hit so many problems that it was like a nightmare. So I ripped it all apart and I started over the morning that we filmed. And I just last night finally finished it because I got, man, those crown decreases with a bunch of scraps. It was like driving me crazy. So I, I didn't touch it for a long time. And then I finished it last night, but I forgot to bring it. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. It could be in the couch pile. No, I don't think it is. It's not here. Bring it um, next time. Yeah, I'll share it on my Instagram or something. Um, so that'll be fun to put the pattern. I have to like write up the pattern and everything and... Um, Get that going but that will probably be the next one mm-hmm. and what's that called it doesn't have a name yet okay i was okay. thinking of calling it retrograde fade mm-hmm. because i will tell you the very top secret way that it is constructed because it's reverse stockinette and purling sucks i'm like let's knit it inside out don't tell anybody you guys you knit this hat inside out so that there's no purling because it's in the round and then you flip it inside out, weave your ends in on the like smooth stockinette side, and then you have a reverse stockinette hat that you didn't do any purling on. So, um, I am very proud of thinking of that. Uh, and then it turns out that like lots of people have done that, and uh, I'm not the first to think of That's that, but good. it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> um, and then that, I think, is going to have a matching cowl. Um, but I don't really want to knit the cowl. And so last time I was talking about I'm like, hey, let's, I'll get some sample knitters to make mm-hmm. the cowl for me. And then a bunch of people contacted me, and then I never did anything with that. Because, again, I, like, hit that, I hit, like, depression, and then, like, everything stopped. So, yeah, I'm just starting to, like, get back, get back in the, in the, the roll the, yeah the life. swing the, the swing the swing <laughs> yes the swing of life um so that'll come that'll come soon we'll see okay and because garter stitch is so comforting and i'm gonna have to put a picture of this because it's this is on the needles and it's humongous yeah. and you're not gonna be able to see um what it looks like so i was like i had these skeins these are um, sheep, sheepies, sheep yeah, cheese, yeah, yeah. sheep. I don't know how to pronounce it. Do you sheep? It's sheep, J E S, sheep, sheep cheese. <laughs> That's wrong. I'm sure. Uh, but the it's um, whorl, sheep cheese whorl, and it's just like a it's an acrylic and cotton fingering weight yarn, and they're like a thousand yards per. They're, they're like enormous skeins. And I had two of them. I'm like, I want to knit them together. So, couch pile. And I couldn't find a pattern. I was just going to like start knitting something for myself. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't find a pattern that I liked. Because, I don't know. I like to start a shawl at the top and just knit and knit and knit and knit until I run out of yarn. And I couldn't find a pattern that would do that in a comforting way. So I made, I made it my own. Oh my gosh. Um, it's a square. The thing that is cool about this yarn is that, or that, that this pattern is it's a square. And so you can't, it's, uh, you can sort of see yeah, the, you can the, see the increases. Color yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it, it fades from a rainbow. And then this is like a white and black fade. Um, and you just, you just fade them. The stripes are like eight, 
eight uh, rows long and there's increases and decreases and it's just very, very simple. And it's gonna be a humongous square. And I think I'm gonna stick some tassels on the end oh so that gosh. it'll like lay, you know, you'll have, it's got a, so it's a square and it'll, it has a slit from one end to the middle. And then those two ends will go over your shoulders and just be your just cozy rainbow shawl. Oh my gosh. So it's going to be huge. It's going to be humongous. Cause, yeah. Because this is How like 2,000 uh, yards of yarn. That, they're big skeins. Um, so this is like just comfort knitting too because it's all it is is garter stitch and stockinette. Just rows and rows back and forth. And the rows are so long. Because it's a square, so it's like, like you know, on a triangle, you start a triangle shawl top down, and at the top, at the, when you start it, the rows are like, you're going real fast, you're zipping back and forth, but then you get to the end, and you're like, this is 10,000 so stitches, it's, long. it takes forever. Um, so this is a square, so it's even bigger, that last row, because it's all the way around. But if that's your jam, if you like those long rows, because I do, um, long rows... Of garter and stockinette. That will be, this will, I'm guessing, probably be like in January or February. Wow. At the beginning of the year. Because, like, the year's almost over. Oh, <sighs> what is even happening? Um, what? Oh. You want to talk about your project bag? Yes. You keep touching I'm it. Showing Show me. my project bag. <laughs> so, um, I've got to hold it up. It has little owl, I know. owls and foxes and With bears. little hats and little oh crowns God. of flowers. It's so cute. Who made adorable. it? Adorable. So this is Whimsy Stitches um, in New Orleans. And he was um, on the Virtual Fiber oh, Festival. Yeah. So, it so cute. Has a strap. It's just such a perfect size. Whimsy. Whimsy's stitches. Whim- w h i m z e e stitches dot com. So yeah. cute. So I just had to have it, and I love it. It's fall. Mm-hmm. So Again, fun. a good size. Yeah. I need to get some bigger. Um, project bags. I have some small ones, and I just I, I don't do yeah except for hats. Right, I don't have. Yeah, I need. I need big stuff. Yeah, big project bags. Mm -hmm. Um, Should this one last time? Oh, here we go. Yes, definitely. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Couch pile. Um, My aunt knit me a hat. Uh My yarn, which is so cool. So this is Toaf by Wooly Wormhead, and that's in the DK MCN base. Um, In Dare You and Vesper is the gray. Love. Isn't that so cute? So that's like it looks like it's knit sideways i didn't even ask and then yeah because it's gar- yeah the rows the rows are going that way yeah yeah mm, pardon me yeah the um it must have been knit flat with like shaping around one edge because it's garter stitch but mm-hmm. the rows like are we on the camera yeah the rows um go vertical yeah. and these must be like short rows maybe <laughs> but cool really nice. that's really cute yeah yeah good colors so I can claim that as knitting for the month <laughs> nice. and then I've got my lava lake oh yeah which I got on to color number four so you so finally like figured out I did so um my next I'll show you next month when I hit color number five um pardon me while I that decorate myself <laughs> so this is um, where going? I am now. So I got onto, yeah, hold that. I got onto my fourth color, Ooh. which is kind of this deep red. Your face so is covered. So I am loving how it's fading in. What did you say? I said your face is covered, face in, the, is covered. in the camera. Goodbye. <laughs> um, so I am really happy with it. This is, yeah, Pretty. really good TV knitting because um, mm-hmm. you don't need to think. The only time you kind of need to think is when you increase a little for your next color, but. Yeah, that is nice. perfect. Um, this is a Stephen West pattern, right? This is, yeah. Lava Lake. And I 
have finally figured out the colors, so I'm going to have two kits. I have enough for two kits that I'm going to put up. Nice. Um, yeah, because in our last episode, you were like, I think you were in here somewhere trying to figure out the purple. Yeah, yeah. So I added in this purple kind of late and then realized, oh, no, that throws off everything else. So now mm-hmm. I have a nice red here and then just a darker kind of red purple for that. Cool. And then I'll start decreasing and it'll go back the other way. So, yeah, I'm at a really long, I'm at a part where it has a lot, the rows oh, are oh, really oh, long I now. I see. So this, so this is the top. Yep. And then. It's going to be so a So you're triangle. knitting it corner to corner. Yep. I gotcha. Okay. okay. So cool. I'm almost at the longest part right now. So these are taken. Mm-hmm. Tell me about your part. stitch markers. Oh, I don't know. They're just little squishy ones. I like them because they're not, um, you know, they're not hard. They just kind of yeah. like squish in They there. look, um, my favorite stitch markers are like, I love using like rubber O-rings that are for like plumbing fittings Gosh, and whatever. So they're so cheap. You can get like a thousand for a dollar. Oh my gosh. Um, and they're, yeah, they're just like these might be little these rubber, little rubber O-rings. They're the best. They're the best. Cool. So, very proud. Nice. That. Which base is this again? This is the riotous sock, so the superwash sock. Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, so those are all my. Those are all your projects. Okay. okay. All right. I have some yarn. I'm gonna show off because I mentioned this in the last episode. Our friend Ryan Yarn uh, in Georgia, who is a sweet baby angel. I was like, hey, will you make me a custom fade kit? Um, and I was. It was gonna be for. I was gonna knit another paramelogram mm-hmm. wrap but then I decided that that was stressing me out too bad so I, so I couldn't I'm not gonna do a paramelogram wrap with this uh at this time mm-hmm. but eventually it will make it into a pattern or maybe a paramelogram wrap 2.0 if I fiddle with the pattern but anyway so he made me the most beautiful looks great green to yellow is that the right order yes mm-hmm. fade yarn fade custom to my exact specifications and it is so beautiful it goes from so he had these colors colorways in his shop they were solid it was this like the base of this color is like a neon green that he called verdant and then um the bright yellow i think highlighter maybe was the name that he gave it um and i was like i love those so much please will you make me fade Um, and then he's like, okay, can I add some yellow and blue and like speckles and stuff? And I was like, do whatever you need to do. Um, and he just blew it out of the park. These are so pretty. I love them. Um, so this one is a meadow of our own. Cute. This one is sour candy. See, does it, I don't know if, I don't know if the camera is going to cooperate. This one, I love this one because it's like, it's got that red Mm -hmm. in it, covered by roses. Um, And it's almost, it like reminds me of like blood splatter almost. I don't know if that's what he was going for, but my head is in (laughs) Halloween right now. And so it like looks like blood splatter to me. Um, And then this one is Neon Ephesus, um, which has, it's got a little bit of red, like reddish, bright, pinky, orange in there. So it's single space. Single Looks space. Like single base. Oh, yes. Like singles, yeah. Like single space. Single That's space. words. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah. it's um, single ply. So thank you, Ryan, for these. They're so beautiful. Um, and I love them. And I'm just going to hold them right here. So I don't, I don't know what I'm going to make with these yet, but I will keep all of you posted. So stay tuned for that. I don't know if he put these, if he was like going to repeat the colors and put them in, in his shop um, or... Uh, he was having so like every indie dyer is having issues with um, getting yarn, stuck in. Yeah, yeah, getting yeah. bases in. Um, I don't know. Do you tell me about that? Like, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, just with the quarantine um, with suppliers. Yeah, it's just um, everyone has been slowed down, so it's just kind of a ripple effect. So it's just hitting us now. Of mm-hmm. course, our busy season, so right. it's really tough. Um, so kind of things are just starting to get a little better and trickling back in but mm-hmm. yeah it's been you kind of have to manage especially if you had like clubs or things like that it's yeah tough if you had promised mm-hmm. things coming out so um luckily um i had i had the advent calendar coming up and got the yarn for that oh, but good. that was out for a little while and so yeah you just kind of have to manage your upcoming yeah. things that you promised 
Yeah, because I, I wanted um, mini skeins, a fade kit in mini skeins. And he's like, there's no such thing as mini skeins right now. Like, no one can get them. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I love you, but I'm not going to unwind 40 oh, man, no. skeins of yarn to make fade kits for you. Sorry. And I'm like, that is, I get it. Like, that's fine. So yeah. I was like, just make me full skeins and I'll just figure out what to do with them. So, but yeah, that's like a weird, man, I'm. I don't know. Raise your hand if you're sick of quarantine and you don't want to play this stupid game anymore. I'm done. <laughs> that sucks. We don't need to talk about that. No one wants to hear about quarantine. Let's talk about books. Awesome. What have you been reading? I have a few here. Oh my gosh. Sarah, so Sarah works at the library and she very wisely got us actual physical copies of the book so I don't have to put screen caps of them. Cut down on the uh, (laughs) editing a little bit. Um, So my first one um, is... It's a Cat Sebastian book. And actually, I grabbed the wrong book, which Christine pointed out. But um, they're all good. This one is good, too. Um, It Takes Two to Tumble is the one I really loved. Um, And this one is really good, too. Um, So they... This is... um, a gay romance and it is magical so uh wait are you telling us about it takes two to tumble let me tell you about takes two to tumble pretend that this is not this this cover (laughs) she got the wrong one (laughs) so it takes two to tumble is um almost sound of music so there's Mm -hmm. a naval captain he's away he's kind of strict with his kids and um while he's away uh, the kids kind of run wild. The wife passes away, Aww. and the local vicar steps in and is caring for the kids. And he comes back and just but doesn't he's know a how. Hot vicar, the hot definitely, vicar, definitely, definitely. Yes. So um, he doesn't know how to, you know, handle the kids, and he's just used to being on the ship and telling people what to do, and they do it. And so <laughs> they just kind of clash about, you know. Um, what to do with the kids and how to take care of them. And they just, um, you know, have feelings for each other, but there's all of this other strife going on and it is wonderful. It's very sound of music. So I just went through and read all of Cat Sebastian. So, um, this one is about a boxer. Um, they're all just super fun, pretty racy. Oh, um, and just, um, I, I, just went through a bunch of these all in a row. I didn't know they were, they were racy. They are Mm. very, I'm going to, cause you told me to read. It takes two to tumble. tumble, And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And then I didn't do it. Uh, but now that I know that they're kind of smutty, my interest is like, like, yes. (laughs) 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 Uh, So, um, can't say enough about that. So much fun. Cat Sebastian. Cat Sebastian. Okay. And then, um, on a light note, um, is the Unhoneymooners I by Christine. Wonderful things about oh this book. Oh my gosh! Just from if you just pick up the first chapter and you just will understand. It's funny. It's light. It's she's just uh, <laughs> the heroine. She's kind of she's a twin, and the other the other twin is just perfect and wonderful and organized, and she's kind of you know a little clumsy and never feels quite in place and. Um, so it kind of, she's the relatable one. Yeah, definitely. And she doesn't get along. Um, she's at her sister's wedding, prepping for her sister's wedding and just feels out of place. And, uh, the best man is the groom's brother and just is kind of snotty and she feels like he looks down on her Mm. and the wedding buffet what had bad fish or something in it and everyone gets sick (laughs) and she the sister said we have these non-refundable honeymoon tickets to go to hawaii you and the guy you know the best man Mm. go because they're the only two who didn't eat the buffet so of course course. thrown together (laughs) and in hawaii and it's it just goes from there so it just you know they're thrown together with all of these activities and kind of like learn more about each other of course of course you know realize like some things that were misunderstood so this would you i mean christina lauren uh is one of my favorite authors and did you know it's actually two it's yes. actually two. Yes, it's no. two. They're like BFFs. Uh, Christina is one of them, and the other one is Lauren something. I don't I remember their last names. No idea. Yes, they, it's a, they're a duo. That's a pseudonym. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. 
Um, and so, so is this, a, is it like a romance? Is it a rom-com? Yeah, is it smutty? Is it more, cool? um, yeah, not too smutty. Um, more rom-com. Okay. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, definitely. Really. So, so fun. Um, and then YA right now, I'm doing The Falconer, um, Ooh. by Elizabeth May. That's a and, good cover. Oh my gosh. I was There's gonna like say, a corset with the lacing oh and a gosh. dagger. And the hair. Uh-huh. So it's, yeah, I'm a sucker for a good cover. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this I am in the middle of right now. It's an alternate Scotland, um, kind oh. of historical fantasy. And she is like, her mother was murdered by fairies. And so she is outfitted to the gills with like crossbows, (laughs) the whole nine hours. And she is hunting them down, trying to find the one who killed her mother. Damn fairies. And it's, it's really fun so far. And it's a little bit, there's like a little steampunk edge to it where she's like designing her weapons and like like adding extra stuff to it that will hurt them more. And so she's like a little bit into that too. So I'm really enjoying this. That sounds awesome. That one's YA. And that's YA. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so did you tell me about the books um, you read that you talked about in the last episode? Oh, yeah, one truly of them? devious. I wasn't quite finished with. Yeah. Um, so that one, I was just going to see. Assassins. No. Truly, yeah. Truly yeah, Truly Devious, Devious was the one. Johnson. Yeah, so that was why and a mystery flipping back from the present day to the 30s. Okay, And I finished yes. that. It was so much fun. So nice. um, that is a trilogy. So I have to start reading mm-hmm. book two. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate trilogies. Because like sometimes you're like, I'm not done with these characters. I'd like to keep going. I want to keep hanging out with them. Um, yeah. I've been doing like comfort reading Almost exclusively. Comfort reading. because needing. you were, had some titles, had some titles, and then you're like, oh, and then you <laughs> saw your choice. I was like, oh, let's go back to yeah. it. something we know. So, okay, I talked about this book. This is Shanghai Girls. I talked about this in the last episode, how I was reading it, and it was really good, like, literary fiction, but also extremely Real disturbing sad. because bodies blowing up and whatever. So I was like, all right. What if sometimes I'll if I switch the um, format I'm reading in, Mm -hmm. I can like finish a book that I've previously abandoned. So like if I was reading with my eyes and I didn't like it, I'll switch to the audio book and be able like it'll be a whole different experience and I'll be able to finish it. So that's what I tried with this one, because like I said, it's really good and I wanted to finish it. I switched to the audiobook and listened for about two minutes, and it was so triggering. This is, like, very much, like, trigger warning. It's, Any trigger that you have, it's in this book. It's, so, it's just yeah. not the time to read it. It's just it's, not, I know, yeah. this is not the time for me for this book. So, Shanghai Girls by Lisa okay C. Put, put it down. Yeah, I love you, but I probably will not be coming back to this one. But, like, so on here is Snowflower and the Secret Fan. Mm-hmm. That was one of my favorite books ever. I love that book. But and not as much of the same kind of content, or it's maybe been just a long a time, time. Since, I re- since I read it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember. Um, so I switched to comfort reading, and I read, for the first time ever, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Sock. Oh, my God. This, co- this It's hard to say, okay? <laughs> the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society uh, by Marianne Schaefer and Annie Barrows. Um, if you have heard of this book they made it into a movie i haven't watched it i'm gonna have to have you read the book i haven't it's so soothing it's so it's um an epistolary novel so that's just a fancy word for it's written as a series of letters um from one character to another so the premise is basically like um this chick in london it's during world war ii or no, right after the war, um, she gets a letter from this dude and he's like, hey, I have found one of your books. It's got your name and your address in it. Let's be friends. And so they like start corresponding. And he lives on an island called Guernsey, which I didn't know what that was until I read this book, uh, which is in the, what's the water between France and England? It's that. The English Channel? Yeah, that. <laughs> um, and so then, so like they're corresponding and he tells her all about how Like, during the Nazi invasion on this island, uh, him and his buddies started this 
literary society and they're like reading all these books and literature changed their lives and whatever. And so she's like, oh my God, I'm writing a, a book about books. Let me come and hang out with you guys and come to a meeting of your literary society. So she goes to Guernsey and I don't want to spoil anything, but they end up falling in love and living happily ever after. Uh, <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's like really cute. And there's, there's lots of, so it's like, it's like a, a book about books, which I love. Right. Um, and it's in an interesting format, which the epistolary, the letters, which you don't get very often. Um, and it's, it's history, which is great. And I learned some stuff and all the characters are like, you know, I love a good cast of quirky characters. So like every character is like funny or, you know like quirky they have different um they have great dialogue and and whatever so that's that's a really good I read the book and then the next day I was like I have to watch the movie I love this so much the movie is not as good never is um and my friend Molly who is a romance writer that um she lives in Minnesota she's also a historical reenactor and she's like yeah that movie is cute one time uh until you realize that the hair is completely historically inaccurate in every scene and I'm like shit no that sucks <laughs> <laughs> but she's like most historical movies are like that because you have to like account for modern tastes right and whatever so I highly recommend that it's very very soothing very like nothing bad happens nobody's body parts get blown off there's some stuff um that happens like off screen about the concentration camps that is disturbing but it's like it's not it's like, it's like memories. It's not, it's not actively, um, it's not on the, it's off screen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really good. And then I read Pride and Prejudice. Oh also very soothing. I don't know. Maybe you've heard of it. Jane Austen. <laughs> She's pretty cool. How many times do you think you've read it? Two. Oh, okay. Uh, two and like a half. I remember the first time I was supposed to read it was for a women's studies class in high school, and I don't think I finished it. And then I went through a phase where I was reading, I blew through all of Jane Austen's novels. Um, so I read it then, and then this time I just, so this would, would have been number two and a half. Okay. How many times have you read it? Oh, I'd say five or six. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's good. Was there anything you picked up that you didn't remember? Hmm... I'm not really. I'm really familiar. I've watched the um, the 2005 movie version with Keira Knightley mm-hmm. like a thousand times. Now, do you prefer that to the Colin Firth? I do. Okay. I do. I know that many people are yeah, it, yeah. not going to be friends with me anymore, but I'm sorry. I really like that version. But I also love the Colin Firth version. Well, and because that's a miniseries, you get more right. too, which yeah. I like. I need to go back and watch that one. Um, but yeah, very soothing. Nice. Super soothing. That's great. Comfort reads. Okay, so that's that. And I don't have a hard copy of the book that I'm currently reading, which I love so much. It is called Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Probably. Um, and it is, so it was described to me. Do you know Katie? Katie P. with the parrots? Yeah, yeah. Okay. She, she, I've been meeting with her on Thursdays. We go to patio knitting at Around the Table Yarns. And we were talking about books last week or the week before. And she's like, yeah, I've been reading this book. It's about lesbian space necromancy. And I'm like, whoa. Okay. I need to read that. <laughs> there is a lot going on there. <laughs> um, she's like, yeah, I know. It sounds crazy. And if you Google lesbian space necromancy, that is the only result. It's only this book. There's nothing. There's no other thing on the un- in the universe that is lesbian space necromancy. Okay. So I'm like, all right, I'll read this book. So I'm listening to the audiobook. And it is fucking phenomenal. It is so good. That's so like that like fantasy is not fantasy and like futuristic mm-hmm. like space sci-fi stuff is like in horror. There's elements of horror in oh it too. Gosh. It is so completely far out of my reading comfort zone. It, I ne- I almost never read anything like that, but it is so good. It is absolutely hilarious. Uh, there's a little bit of romance, 
Um, Mm -hmm. There's sword fighting. There's skeletons. There's dead bodies. There's a mystery. There's bone monsters. Uh, There's... And you're like, so like when I first heard about it, I was like, there's no way that this book is going to work. Like there's way too too much. much. There's too much going on. But it works. It works works so well. And the audio book is read by, I think her name is Moira Quirk, which is a completely rad name. Uh, And she's phenomenal. She does all the voices and they're all, and she like, she just gets the the nuances of the, the character's one-liners there's that's what she said jokes in this book (laughs) there's puns it's so good it's so good so i'm almost done with it i have like 20 percent left of the the audiobook which i meant to finish yesterday but life i i honestly i don't want to finish it because i don't want it to be over like that's how good it is that's really good but there's um it's a it's a trilogy thank god the next book is about um I guess I did. I even really I didn't even explain the plot really. No, I want to know. So, the character Gideon is an orphan uh, in the ninth house. I don't super really understand. It's very like Game of Thrones, where there's the different houses in this like futuristic space galaxy, Um, and they're. There's like an issue with the emperor or something. And so the orphan, she is a swords like master. I'm totally going to butcher this. Um, And then there's like the basically princess of the ninth house called the reverend daughter. Her name is Harrow Hark and she's a total C word. Uh, She's really bitchy and she's really mean to Gideon. um, And but they end up getting thrown together they like go to this other planet on a space shuttle uh to like compete in like puzzle like some kind of puzzle thing to like become the like whoever wins this puzzle thing becomes the emperor's new groove no uh the emperor's new like bodyguards or something oh my god so i'm you're going to have to go and read the description because I'm ruining it. But but anyway, so they're thrown together and they're like fighting monsters and there's dead people, like I said. And 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 Harrow, Harrow, who's the, the bitchy princess, she can raise skeletons and make them do stuff. And it's Pick creepy up. and it's there is a lot happening. But like I said, it's it's really funny and the writing is really good. I like you could give me the shittiest story, but if the writing is beautiful, like you, if the sentence structure and the word choice is really good, I'm like, I'm here for this. Let's do it. I don't even care what, you know, you could be describing a cardboard box to me, but like if you do it beautifully, I'm there. Um, so it's good, good writing, very good writing. And like I said, the audio, the audio narrator is awesome. It makes such a difference. Yeah. So everyone, please go get that book, except you can't because it's uh, out of stock at like every library because it's so good because yeah, you couldn't, couldn't get, get it. it. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, it is extremely rad. That's great. Very rad book. And it's pretty new. So the second book's out, but I don't think book three is out. Book three isn't out yet. I don't even think they have cover art yet for book three. Okay. So... Yeah, I think it just came out like at the end, like last, last year. year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do this afternoon is go and finish, finish that. that book. Yeah, because it's good, good stuff. And I have a challenge for you, which I what? kind of hinted about. Which for is for me or for them? For you, me. Well, yes. Well, actually, for both of us for next month. Okay. So, um. I'm a romance reader. I've never read a Harlequin romance. Me neither. Like the little classic. Never done it. So I think we need to read one. Okay. So I pulled some titles from the library and there are diehard Harlequin romance readers. Like come in. They come out <laughs> monthly. So like we'll come in. You know, if one isn't on the show, well, where is June? I, you know, oh, no. like you need to fill out the, you know, like you don't miss one. Yeah. So 
I'm sure I've just been missing out. Okay. So there's different lines of Harlequin. So there's like contemporary, there's historical. Oh, give there's, me the one with the so cowboy on the cover. I got two of each. So you're going to need to pick which we're both going to read. <gasps> okay. So we'll see. Um, so I've got three choices for us. Okay. And I've got two copies of each. So BJ Daniels. Double action deputy. Ooh, cover. I'm intrigued. I mean, He's wearing a cowboy hat. I mean, jeans. come on. I haven't done a cowboy romance. And he in has a, a rifle. While. Uh, yeah. Um, so this is Harlequin Presents, which is a different series. Shy Queen in the Royal Spotlight. She's wearing jewels oh, and a I... like a lace nighty. Yeah. Okay. So that's looking mm-hmm. pretty good too. So, and then historical captured by her enemy knight. Ooh. I know. So her and they're like pretty. little bite size, you know, yeah. for like such a good. So I wanted to see if oh, you wanted to read one of these gosh. next month. Okay, wait. Let's can I hold them up? <laughs> it holds one okay, here's the cowboy one. <laughs> it's is it gonna? No. <laughs> I'll put pictures. Oh my god. So I know, hard to choose. I want to pick one just based entirely on the cover and not knowing anything. I don't want to read the back. No, don't read the back. Uh, (laughs) It's not going to be that one with the nighty. That's okay. Um, I I don't, I'm really, I'm I'm very intrigued by the cowboy hat and the rifle, but I'm also intrigued by his beard. Oh my God. (laughs) I don't know. I have this one in my hand, so let's, let's read the cowboy. Okay. One. I haven't we'll done a the contemporary one. in a little while, so yeah, th- right. I I read almost only historical stuff, so this will be good. A relentless marshal, a rogue detective, a bargain they may not live long enough to regret. You guys, his name is Brick. <laughs> his name is Brick Savage. <laughs> See, that's amazing. It's supposed to be good. What's her name? Maureen Mortensen. Okay. Alliteration, I like it. Brick Savage asks homicide detective Maureen Mortensen <laughs> to help him find the person who destroyed her family. She quickly accepts his offer. But as the stakes rise and they get closer to the truth, more horrible than they ever expected, can they find the murderer before they become targets? Oh my God, so there's a murder mystery. So if you'd like to pick this up and read along with us. Yes. We're going to double action please deputy. do that. Well, So we'll talk about this in our December episode. Yeah. Which... I can't remember the date. December 4th, maybe, is when mm-hmm. that will air. Uh, yeah, guys, read this with us. Okay, so it's by BJ Daniels. It's called Double Action Deputy. And the character is Brick <laughs> fucking Savage. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. I love romance. Oh. So, yeah, this will be good. Cool. That's fun. Thank you for this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is this a library book? It is. Okay, so I won't, but... I won't abuse it then. I won't. <laughs> What I'll probably do is get the, I like to read on my Kindle. I'm like, once I got a Kindle, I like, I hate reading books made of paper these days, but I appreciate that you got that for me. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Do we get everything? I I gotta look at our list. I can't get over that his name is Brick Savage. That's so wonderful. Yeah, I, that's. We got it. I've, we hit everything on my list. That's great. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, now I'm sad that we're done. <laughs> it does go by so fast. It Don't really you start does. talking. I was so tired after finishing the last episode. Like I was just totally drained. But um, because like being for introverts, it's a lot of talking. It is. Yeah. It is a lot. And um, for being in quarantine. Right. Yeah. Like seeing another human like is very strange. Talking for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I feel pretty good this yeah. time. So. Can I really quick tell you about yes. my pants? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know about your pants. Guys, I got these grandpa pants, okay? They are from, they're basically pajamas. They are from Land's End. And they are, yeah, they're just like cotton knit. They're stretchy pants. There's an elastic waist that comes up to my boobs. Like and they're it's, pants like, pants. They're not pajama pants. Yeah. Oh. They're like, they're just knit pants. Yeah, like if you search on Land's End, like they're women's knit pants or whatever they're so comfy these are my new quarantine pants and i got this print it makes me so happy it's like brown and black and gray houndstooth and i feel like a grandpa and they're and they're so comfy so i just really wanted to brag about my pants that's all <laughs> <laughs> nice way to end up the show yeah. <laughs> and on that note <laughs>
thank you for hanging out with us here on Hellions. We love you. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you soon. (laughs) Okay, let's do a really quick little smile again, just in case the one didn't. Okay, but I'll edit this part out probably. Ready? (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Thank you. (laughs) All right. Good deal. Oh, my gosh.